Hello, and welcome to another video by RPGMD, a resource dedicated to writing your prescription for all things dice, dragons, and gaming. Now, today's topic will be that of chases. And sometimes chases are needed when the monster that the party is fighting is smart enough to know that they need to get the hell out of combat. Sometimes chases are needed when the party is running from a very powerful rolling trap, or maybe the characters are just being pursued incessantly by a merchant, a priest, or just a crazy person in town. By looking at basic player and monster stats, chase scenes would at first glance appear to be very boring in Dungeons and Dragons. Character X has a speed of Y, and monster Z has a speed of whatever, and therefore the person with the fastest speed always wins chase scenes, right? Not right. What most Dungeon Masters and characters I found don't know is that there are actually specific rules for chase scenes that are listed in the Dungeon Masters Guide on page 252. Now chase scenes in Dungeons and Dragons start very similar to most things in Dungeons and Dragons, and that's with an initiative roll. If the player characters are chasing someone they were just recently in combat with, go ahead and use that old initiative roll, as one, it just speeds things along, and two, makes sense in the moment. But if they are talking to someone and that devolves into a chase scene, have your player characters roll for initiative, which may confuse them into thinking they're being attacked for a split second as well. Now once initiative is rolled, the second thing that you have to do is establish how far the two parties or multiple parties that are involved in the chase are from each other. And while this is very easy if you're using a tactical battle map, can be more of something that you just come up with in your own mind, uh, as the dungeon master if you don't already have that mapped out for you. And I'd recommend at least starting your chase scene around 200 feet away from each other, but obviously this is going to be dependent as that will not be the case if you're just talking to someone one-on-one, -on -one, I assume it wasn't 200 feet away, unless the person can teleport 200 feet away. Once these two starter points of initiative and distance are established, Chase scenes are a lot like combat scenes in Dungeons and Dragons in that rounds are established in a specific order and each character gets both an attack and a move action during each of these rounds. The movement will be pretty obvious, it will be based on the speed, but what actions can a character take each round during a chase scene? Now the most obvious and probably most frequent action used in chase scenes is going to be the dash action. And like in combat, dash is going to be used to double your character's movement speed during the chase. However, unlike in combat, dash is actually an action that you can only use a finite number of times, which is going to be 3 plus your constitution modifier, as characters with more stamina are able to go a little farther. Additionally, any time a character in a chase scene wants to use the dash action, they are able to do so, but must make a constitution DC saving throw, and if less than 10, gain a level of exhaustion, which if a character hits level 5 of exhaustion, they are instantly reduced to a movement speed of 0, ending the chase. Now characters are free to do any other action that they wish during the chase as well, but will note that their distance between the two parties will grow, as one is doubling their movement speed while one is not. You can attack, you can cast spells, you can do whatever you like, however the only thing that you cannot do is that two parties that are directly involved in the chase cannot make attacks of opportunity against each other as they are presumably both moving at the same time. However, if someone were to perhaps pass by someone not involved in the chase, as an example, a gang of thieves, that uninvolved party could make an attack of opportunity to whoever passed by them. So now that we've mastered the basics of running down, let's say, a straight, narrow path, how do we make our chase scenes a little more exciting to make them something more spectacular like you might see in a Hollywood movie such as Lord of the Rings? To make our chase scenes into the most cinematic, exciting possible moments, we need to keep a couple of things in mind. The first of which is going to be that interesting chases take place upon multiple environments each of which presents the pursuer and the pursuee with multiple different obstacles or complications to overcome. The next is that each of these complications that arise during the chase should have multiple means of succeeding, as players should be rewarded for their creativity, and the person who is pursued or is doing the pursuing needs to be an interesting character. 
And on that, I would say that either the non-player character part of this should be someone who's pretty good at chasing or running away. Chase scenes are not interesting if they're over in two rounds. If this takes the GM fudging dice rolls, I would say this is one of the rare moments that I totally support a dungeon master fudging things behind the screen. Otherwise, there was no point in learning all these chase scene rules anyway. So that's great and all, but how does someone come up with multiple different complications that happen during the chase and different ways to succeed for them? Luckily, the Dungeon Master Guide does provide us a list of complications to throw into your chase scenes as well, also found next to the rules on page 252 of the Dungeon Master's Guide. In the Dungeon Master's Guide, we see that there are two tables. One for chases that happen in the city and complications that can arise there, such as large carts getting brought in the way, packs of people who won't move, etc. And there's also another table that shows wilderness complications if the chase scene is taking place outside, such as a swarm of insects, etc. These tables are all nicely numbered so that you can roll randomly for complications so that even you are not prepared and can think up these different things on the fly so that it feels more organic and less like a rigid thing that must happen and also prevents you from kind of anchoring on certain complications that must happen and therefore the chase must be this long because sometimes they will end early and that's okay. Now one of the hardest complications to run in a chase scene is actually one that isn't rolled on a table, and that's going to be if the party or the pursuees or whatever it is decides to break the chase into multiple chases. If the party decides to split up to catch someone, or if they're being chased and decide to split up, the chase that was one now becomes two, which can become very, very burdensome for the DM as they now have to run two simultaneous chasings, keeping track of everyone's distance from each other, their initiatives, their roles, everything. So mastery of these rules is going to be crucial for these moments because they need to happen lickety split, but also you need to keep in mind where each chase is occurring and how close the two chases are to each other. Finally, when does a chase scene end? And there's the obvious, which is either one party is caught, um, which I would argue should be something that is rolled for. The Dungeon Master's Guide kind of just says, oh, when they're caught up, it's over. But I think there's a little bit more to that. People don't just say, oh, tag, you got me. The chase is over. Uh, there's a little bit more, and I would have my characters either roll acrobatics, strength, whatever is more appropriate to the situation. Uh, and then the chase can also end, as we talked about before, if someone drops out either from exhaustion or they just physically can't keep up because they don't have any more dash actions. And the last thing that will end a chase that we haven't talked about is actually a matter of stealth. Now, a couple rounds into a chase, if the pursued party is able to break line of sight from the pursuing party, they can roll a stealth check. And if that stealth check is higher than every single person involved in the pursuing's passive perception, they can end the chase by hiding. Now, this can only be done if the line of sight is completely broken. If one person that is pursuing the person that is running away still has line of sight, they cannot make a stealth roll. It will automatically fail no matter how high it is. Now, But if you can break it for just six seconds, you can do this. And the Dungeon Master Guide suggests adding advantage if there's a lot of things to hide around or there's a lot of people to kind of confuse the situation. And disadvantage if you're trying to do this in, say, an open field where there really isn't much to hide behind, even if you were somehow lucky enough to break line of sight in that situation. Additionally, it suggests that you would have disadvantage if you were being pursued by someone who was, say, a ranger, or someone who had a very high survival skill, as they're used to kind of tracking prey, and wouldn't be fooled by simple stealth tricks. So I hope you can use all of these to kind of master chase scenes in your campaign and use them a little more often. I think they're a pretty underutilized mechanic in Dungeons and Dragons, and they can be used at really any level to kind of spice up some of the more boring combat encounters that you might have to deal with at like level one when you're facing that fourth kobold horde. Maybe the shaman runs away and has the best loot and the characters really only get it if they're willing to go and pursue after him. Chase scenes can be a little moot if the whole party is something like hasted, 
Uh, but I still think that they can be a fun thing that many player characters haven't been able to experience, mostly because it's a little more work on the DM's part, and a lot of times people just don't think of it. They think every monster is going to fight to the death when that's really not the case. And then it's actually going to wrap up our video on Chasings and Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. As always, thank you to anyone who's made it this far in the video. Please, please like, favorite, and subscribe. You'd be doing me a big favor. I will be sure to put a link in the description to all the resources that I mentioned in the video today. And if you like my content, you can find a link to my other videos over here and over here. I'm RPGMD, writing you a prescription for all things dice, dragons, and gaming.